Wow. <laughs> Midawalin, Ani, Bojo, Bonjour, Sego, Tansi, Hello. My name is Gertie Mae Muse. I am Mi'kmaq Abe from the unceded ter Mi'kmaq territory on Western Newfoundland. <clears throat> and I belong to the Halibut Mi'kmaq First Nation. I'm currently the CEO of the Indigenous Primary Health Care Council. I am joined today by my esteemed colleagues who make it all happen in the field. Diane Smiley, Ontario's Provincial Indigenous Cultural Safety Director, Program Director, and Jane Collins, BC's Provincial Lead for Sanya's ICS Training Program. On behalf of the Southwest <clears throat> Aboriginal Health Access Centre's board and staff, our partners, Sanyas at the Provincial Health Services Authority, and our program, the Ontario ICS program, our funders, Ontario Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care and the Southwest Lynn, Wulalan, Chimigwech, Nawe, Yahago, to the Alliance for Healthier Communities Board for honoring us with your Community Health Champion Award for 2019. It's a tremendous honor and privilege to be recognized for the brave work our health leaders and communities are collectively undertaking to uproot indigenous specific racism within our healthcare system and other systems across our society. I want to begin with words from our key partner in BC, Cheryl Ward, who has an award, uh, who has a video for us. Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl Ward. I am Kokwakiwak from the Namgis First Nation, which is a large unceded territory on coastal BC. Thank you to everyone for this honor. And true to my teachings, honors such as this are not individual, but are communal. This honor is for the leaders and the teams in BC and in Ontario, to all of the people who have gone on before and upon whose shoulders we stand. Gila Kasla to all of you. I would have come to see you in person, but I am convocating this week and would have missed the ceremony. Still a hard decision. This program is 11 years old now and still young. We began this work in BC and it wasn't long before Gertie Mae Muse and Guy Hager from Ontario came to find out more about it. What we did and are doing is disruptive work because it is much different than the kind of work settlers have become accustomed to mostly cultural awareness or cultural sensitivity training. We know that working with Indigenous leaders across this country, as we do in BC, Ontario and Manitoba, is critical to transforming health and all social systems. It has taken a village, as they say, to raise this program and ultimately to raise consciousness about the inequities that target Indigenous people in our society. Telling the truth is hard work. In fact, it is the very hardest work. And if we are serious about creating deep change in our society, then we need to respect that we are moving weighty, raw, and painful boulders up the mountain. It has taken a lot of heavy lifting to keep moving the boulders of ignorance, of settler supremacy, and of racism and discrimination. Deep change will occur when all people understand that their role is either one of sustaining or one of dismantling these systemic structures. Our partners in Ontario have been a key part of its success there. Thanks to Gertie May, Guy Hager, Diane Smiley and her team, Southwest Ontario Health App Access Centres and the local integrated health networks. We need to work together to be effective and our strong partnership here has shown just how effective this can be. Thank you for this honour and best wishes as you do your work to move these boulders up your own mountains. Jane Collins is the leader for the Sanyas program provincially and nationally and is here to accept this award on uh, Sanyas' program's behalf. Gila Kasla. Thank you, Cheryl. And 
I want to introduce now Jane Collins, who's just traveled from BC to be with us. She has a few words for us. Hi, I'm really honored to be present with you. Um, and I'm going to start by just introducing myself in, and locating myself. So I'm Jane Collins, and I'm a white settler of Irish and Italian heritage. And I was born on Treaty 1 territory on the original lands of the Anishinaabe, Cree, OJ Cree, Dakota, and Dene people, and, for the, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. And for the last 12 years, I've lived and worked as a guest on the unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. And I have the honor of being a member of the Sanyas team. And I'd like to just raise with us uh, what we've learned in our program in the last 11 years is that there's a significant gap in knowledge about the true history of Canada, the history of colonization, and the ongoing harm that is happening, that is occurring on a daily basis across our systems. We've trained now over 85,000 people across the country. And I'd like to just, as a white settler, call out to people in the room to ask, how many people here have taken a Sanyas training course? And now, as a white settler, I look around the room. <laughs> and to the people who haven't raised your hands, I call to you to know better and to do better. And this is to invest the time and the energy to increase your, and build your knowledge, awareness, and skills to work safely and build safer systems to stop the harm that is happening and to truly invest as Canadians in reconciliation efforts. So thank you. Thank you, Jane, for those good words. When I joined SOHAC and the Southwest Lynn in 2011, the local Aboriginal Health Committee had received base funding for Guy Hagar to deliver Indigenous cultural safety training to Lynn-funded health service providers. Guy is a soft-spoken, tall, Onondaga man equipped with 75 slides and 200 workshops per year. He was tasked with delivering 200 workshops a year. Sometimes he was lucky and got to use his full presentation and sometimes barely five slides, depending on how much time was given. Regular series complaints of poor treatment of Indigenous people inside health services continued unabated. We knew something had to change. My first job was to evaluate and recommend improvements and potentially, if not, to risk losing this base funding. The moral of the story, don't give an A hack a bit of base funding to solve a big problem because we might just do it. <laughs> it was Guy who told me about the work being done in BC and we tracked down Cheryl Ward with the Provincial Health Services Authority there. There was an immediate kinship created and after seeing their training curriculum, the light bulb went off. I mean like really, duh. <laughs> after having worked in ICS for over 20 years, it was a breath of fresh air to have found a solid method for addressing the real problem, which is the widespread, deep-rooted, systemic, indigenous-specific racism in this country. What struck me about the Sanyas training was its anti-racist, anti-oppression, decolonizing pedagogy and the facilitated approach that provides high levels of excellent support to non-Indigenous learners. They also had something that we didn't have and couldn't afford to duplicate in Ontario, the capacity for scalability through their online platform. I wanted this for Ontario. Cheryl agreed to partner with us, help adapt the training for Ontario and incubate a provincial Ontario ICS program. I convinced the Southwest Lynn to provide one-time money to create the first curriculum content and our training went live six, year, six months later. In the years since, the program has grown and we have been granted another three years of provincial funding from the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care. We have now trained close to 20,000 policy leaders, professionals, and administrators here in Ontario, even though BC has um, trained 85,000 nationally across multiple sectors. <clears throat> 
We are more, we're most importantly active in, actively engaged in supporting evidence-based change management, interventions, and processes within the hospital, primary health care, mental health, and public sectors. We also have co-created a national webinar series. We conduct research and regularly publish findings, so we're committed to continue sharing our collective learnings. We would have not been able to do or achieve any of this without the tireless support of Brian Dokis and the senior team at SOHAC who continues to administer the program, Diane Smiley, provincial director who took this program off the side of my desk, built an excellent team and is driving incredible results in Ontario. Most importantly, our amazing friend and partner in crime, Cheryl Ward, who has been a longtime champion and is now a leading expert in this field. Cheryl has spoken about the giants whose shoulders we stand on, and I want to acknowledge today that to us, Cheryl is definitely one of those giants. Together, our call to action today is to have the federal, provincial, and territorial governments from coast to coast to coast across Canada dedicate resources to implement Indigenous-specific anti-racism education initiatives. As Cheryl has said, the ICS program in Canada is 11 years old. It's six years old in Ontario, but it's still very young. There's lots of work to do. We need all levels of governments to take up this work now so our collective dreams of a reconciled Canada and a fair and just society can be realized. Miigwech walaan nawe.